All right, so we are solving exponential functions. Uh, I'm sorry, we're solving exponential equations in this lesson, right? Um, first of all, an exponential equation is one that has, um, it's an equation and it's got an x in the exponent. Okay. One thing you want to do is write the powers on both sides of the equation in terms of the same base. Okay? So, for example, take a look at this one here. If you make your equation looks, look like this in the box there, right? 3 to the x equals 3 to the 5. If the bases are the same number, then you can get the exponents equal to each other. All right? So the, the trick is to um, have the same base on both sides. Remember, a negative exponent converts a number to its reciprocal. So if you have a 2, but you need a 1 over 2, that's a negative exponent, right? So 2 to the negative 1 becomes 1 over 2. All right, so let's do this first one. Look at the base here, that's a 3. Look at the base here, that's a 9. So what I want to do is I want to make them both a 3. It's easier to convert into the smaller base, right? So 3 is the, is the like more elemental base. Convert to 3. So 3 to the x stays as is. Now, how can I write 9 in terms of a 3? It's what? It's 3 what? 3 squared, right? 9 is 3 squared. And then I had a 4 over there to the power of 4. So that's the same as 3 to the x equal to 3 to the 8. Once you have the same base, you can set those equal to each other. So x is just 8. Okay? All right, what about this one? I have 2 to the 5x, and I have a 4. How can I rewrite the 4? It's 2 squared. So 2 to the 5x stays, and then I have 2 squared to the power of 2x minus 1. Okay? Now, here, let me show you how I write it. I don't write it with the parentheses over there. I know that I'm going to end up multiplying those exponents, so I just write it like this. Okay? Now that I have the same base, I could set these equal to each other. So 5x is 2x minus 2. 4x minus 2. So x is negative 2. What? Okay, these are exponential functions, right? What is the domain of all exponential functions? All real numbers. If all numbers work, right, for these x's, then there is no reason to check your answers. All right? Okay. Oh, I have a typo here. This, uh, this should be 2 to the 2. Okay? So now look at this. I have a 1 over 2 and a 2. How can I make those two bases the same? Not multiply by a negative, but raise it to the power of minus 1, right? Okay, and it's up to you which one you want to do, all right? So do you want to change the half to a 2 or the 2 to a half? Okay, the 2 to a half. So let's leave this the same. 1 over 2. No, it doesn't matter at all. So the 4x plus 1 equals, so this, right? What's another way to write 2? Well, it's 1 over 2 to the minus 1 right? So I can either 
So if I ask you how many years do you have left until you graduate from high school, you could either say two or you could say half to the minus one, right? It's the same, okay? Times 2x plus one here. So remember, remember, if the 2x plus one is an exponent, it stays as an exponent. Be careful to not demote it to a, a, a coefficient, right? It can't get demoted, all right? Now, now am I ready to set them equal to each other? I am. So 4x plus 1 is negative 2x plus 1. 4x plus 1 is negative 2x minus 1. 6x is 2. No, 6x is negative 2. So x is negative 1 third. Okay, here, I have a, right, I have an equation, um, the exponent is only on one side, just a number on the other side, it's okay, it works the same way, I have a base of 9, I have an 81, 9 is the smaller, I like to, you know, convert the 81 to that, so, I'm going to rewrite the 81 as, 9 squared equals 9, 3x plus 2. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, shouldn't you convert the 9s into 3 squares? It really doesn't matter. You just want to make these two the same. All right? So now I can set these equal to each other. 2 equals 3x plus 2. 0 equals 3x, x equals 0. All right? So those are exponential functions. Now, solving them is one thing, but most often you have to first create one and then solve it. All right, so how do we write an exponential function? Um, to solve problems in real life, we have to write what we call an exponential model. All right? A model is the same as a function. So in math, when I say model, I'm not looking for diagrams. I'm looking for a function. All right, so here's how we do it. Remember, exponential functions have this form, right? y equals ab to the x. So what you're going to do is substitute into that, solve for b, and then you have to put b back into the main equation. It's very, very important that when you're done, x and y are variables, all right? x shows up and y shows up. Okay, so let's do one. Kristen starts an experiment with 7,500 7, bacteria cells. After four hours, there are 23,000 cells. Okay, um, write an exponential function that could be used to model the number of bacteria after x hours if the number of bacteria changes at the same rate. Okay, so our equation is this, y equals a, b to the x. Okay. All right, in this equation, y is the final amount. a is the initial amount. x is usually the time. Okay, so, oh. And so I imagine even questions like this, this like t squared, is this like the t thing? Similar. That's what I'm saying is if I ruled the world, they would all, you know, be written the way the same way. It's it's yeah, this is it. Yeah. So we're gonna do more like during SIEP. Well, that's what we have to find. Okay, so do we have a an initial and a final amount here? Right? I do. I have um my final amount is this one. 
my initial is this one. Okay, so let's let's plug those in. So seven thousand five hundred. I'm sorry, uh, twenty three thousand equals seven thousand five hundred b to the power of four. All right, and if I can divide. Okay, so I can get rid of equal numbers of zeros. So I have, look at what I have here. 230 over 75 is b to the 4. What am I going to do to that one now? Right, but, well, I'm going to leave it as a fraction because I want to minimize the number of, like, the amount of work. But what am, how am I going to solve it for b? What am I going to do to b? Take a fourth root. Take a fourth root. So now B is the fourth root of all of that. So fourth root of 230 over 75. 1.323. All right, um, I'm gonna round it to the nearest tenths place. So now this is not this is not even close to an answer. My answer is I need a an exponential function, right? So I'm gonna substitute it back into this equation. Um, X and Y have to stay. Everything else must be substituted. So Y is 7,500 times 1.3 to the x. That's my model or function. Yeah, that's the answer to part A. Yeah. Well, yeah, so we, it's okay, right? Um, how many bacteria cells can be expected after 12 hours? So here X is 12. And we're going to do 7,500 times 1.3 to the 12. Well, yeah. Well, because it was like 223,000 at, you know, 4 hours. So let's see. Times 1.3 to the power of. 12, 174,000, 736. So on your answer line, you would say 174,736 bacteria or cells. Okay. Yeah. Um, sorry, that's my question. Do you have any science notations? We do if the number gets too large, but this is still good enough. Okay, um, another another application of this is compound interest, right? Compound interest is when you put money in a bank. The first, you know, like the first round, you get interest, and suppose like you start with five hundred, now you have five hundred and ten, and then you get interest on the total on the five hundred and ten, and then on the total, and then on the total. All right. This is the formula for compound interest. Well, yeah, that's what we got anyway, right? Yeah. Okay, you, yeah. Okay, so if it's the number of bacteria, you don't want like 0.8 bacteria. That's not a, you know, so round down. Okay, so this one, A is the final amount. P is the principal. That's how much money you initially put in the bank account. R is the rate as a decimal. T is time. Okay, N. N is the number of times per year interest is paid.
It's the power of NT. So, look at this. It says a sum of 8,000 is deposited into an account that pays 5% interest. Find the balance of the account after 15 years. If interest is compounded semi-annually, monthly, or daily. This is where you get your N's. So N is how many times a year the bank is paying you. If it's semi-annually, if something happens semi-annually, how many times a year? How many times a year does that happen? Twice a year, right? So if it's semi-annually, N is two. If it's monthly, how much is N? 12. If it's daily, how much is N? 365. So, what is it that we're given here? $8,000 is deposited. So what is that? A, P, R, T, what? It's P. So P is 8,000. How about the 5%? That's my rate, but how do I use it? 0 0.05 as a decimal. 15 years is the time. If I want to find the balance, that's A. Okay. For the first one, A equals P, 1 plus R over N to the NT. So that's 8,000, 1 plus 0 0.05 over 2, 2 times 15. All right? So go ahead and plug that in. The trick is to do it all in one shot. 1 plus 0 0.05 over 2 to the power of 2 times 15. Okay? So how much money is that? 16,000. 780 and how many cents? 50 cents. Okay, I'm not going to tell you to round to two decimal places. You need to know this. Okay? All right. Monthly, what's going to change? Right, it's going to be 1 plus 0 0.05 over 12 to the power of 12 times 15. So when I go here, I don't retype the whole thing over again. I go up twice, highlight this, and press enter. So now I get the same thing back, but now it's editable. So I go and just edit and make the 2 into a 12. Um, I'll tell you. I'll show you right now. So A is $16,909.60. Okay. Here, okay, so here's what you here's what you do, Max. You go up, up, you highlight that, press enter, and now it's editable. Why did I get You know what? I think I need to change my float here. I think I need to change my settings. So this is gonna be a hundred and sixty nine. Uh, 16935 and 10 cents. Okay, um, take a look here for a minute. Here the bank was paying you twice a year. Here the bank is paying you every single day. But is it a lot of money? Here you have 16,780. Here you have 16,935. So I have like 150 more dollars over 15 years. Did it really make that much of a difference? Nope. Not really. Okay? All right. So this homework is due for Thursday.